Hello and welcome again to this particular session. So now in this one we are going to pick up section 6 of course first and in section C, section C actually there are lots of sections as you know. First we are picking section 1 of section C and of course LAQ stands for your long answer question and the first one is actually very interesting question not very tough but interesting question because it will test your knowledge of not only what we call corporate financial reporting but it will also test you how well and deeply and uh, how well you are equipped with the concepts of your financial management too let's see and have a look over here or oh, 1 for 2017 ohm limited grants 50 options uh, each to its 2100 employees at rupees 70 that being on 1 for 2017 ohm limited simply is telling its employees that we will grant you 50 options each there are 2100 employees and we will grant you at a price of rupees 70 only although it is mentioned further in the question that on that date when we granted this scheme on that date the market price is 110 exercise price generally will be lower than the market price no doubt about that this is your exercise price entity is telling to its employees that on 1 for 2017 it is telling that we will allow you to purchase this share at the rate of 70 and on that date the market price was 110 but this market price is irrelevant for us the reason being is quite simple because today we are granting the scheme and today itself the employees cannot become entitled to these options they will have to wait till at least the vesting period and even after the vesting period as i told you while explaining india 102 that some time period is granted to the employees correct known as exercise period during which actually they will exercise the uh, what we call the options provided they become entitled to the options the day on which they are going to exercise the option whatever market price would be prevailing in the market so employees need not require to pay that particular price in fact we will charge only 70 irrespective of the market price which was prevailing or which would be prevailing sh uh, should i say correct the day on which actually they are going to exercise the option and remember that particular day will fall nearly after two three years and further it is given now clearly that vesting period that vesting period is vesting date is 31st of march 2020 that is almost after three years end of 18 19 and 20 that means at the end of third year that is 31st of march 2020 employees will become entitled to and the exercise date is even one year after what we call vesting date the exercise date is 31st of march 2021 that means on this date if you want to exercise the option then you can exercise provided you are entitled to so whatever price in the market would be running at that time we will irrespective of that we will give you these shares only at the rate of 70 and you must understand that the difference between market price and exercise price is known as fair value correct at the end and fair value basically signifies the discount which we discount or concession which we are offering to the employees at the end of the year one interestingly company found company found that 100 employees had left and estimated that expected annual for future rate will be 10 percent now this is quite interesting line the first line itself is very interesting at the end of the year one at the end of year one how many employees will be there let's see we had in the beginning 2100 employees and it is very clearly mentioned that actual employees left actual employees actual number of employees who left the organization is 100 it is given in the question correct at the end of the year one the company found that 100 employees had left and expected that annual four feature rate will be 10 percent at the end of the year one company found that there are only 2000 employees but company is expecting that at the rate of 10% more, the employees will leave the organization. We have already reached the end of the first year. And company is expecting that at the rate of 10% in the second year and in the 10% in the third year. Because at this, moment, at this moment, we are at the end of the third year. 
So we are visualizing that by the time we would reach the end of the vesting date, how many employees will be there? So as per our visualization, we find that I am writing here expected to leave. 100 employees have already left and expected to leave means those employees whom we are expecting that may leave the organization at the end of second year and third year. Expected to leave. And company is expecting that out of 2000 at the rate of 10% employees will leave. Now if I will compute 10% of 2000, it means 200 employees will leave in second year because I am expecting at the rate of 10% annual for future will take place. I have already reached at the end of the second year. So in the second year, 200 employees will leave and in the third year, 2000 minus 200 because out of 2200 will leave further that means 1800 employees will be there as per my estimation i am at the end of the first year at the end of the first year there is concrete situation before me that there are 2000 employees and i am expecting that out of this 2200 will leave in the next year and again 10 percent will leave in the next year that, but at the end of the second year, as per my computation, there will be only 1,800 employees, so 10 percent, so 180. That means expected to leave is 380. So I am expecting that 380 employees will leave in uh, uh, in second and third year in total. So by the time we would reach the vesting period, which will fall at the end of the third year, we may have this much of employee. Correct? If I will subtract 380, it will tell me the number of employees who will reach the vesting period and who would be entitled to the options. So obviously I am going to then multiply that with the number of options. I am offering how many options? I am offering 50 options and I will have to multiply them with fair value. Whatever fair value is there that I will tell you and that will give me total expenditure, total employee expenses over three year, three year period scenario. Is it clear to you? And then I will take one third of that, this much of expense I am going to recognize in the first year. Now the second question is, second question in this particular case study is, we have to find out now, we have found out actual employees left, expected to leave, now I have to find out fair value. Now in this question, very interesting point is given and here test of your financial management will come into play. See here it is given earnings per share and price earning ratio what 26 and 5 have you heard about price earning ratio no one should say no correct i'm already 54 heart attack may take place so point here is that you should have this much of knowledge at least correct you have reached at this particular level i'm looking out for space just wait let me rub it out Mm -hmm. What is price earning ratio? If I am going to ask you what is price earning ratio, at least you should be in a position to let me know that price earning ratio simply shows the relationship between the price and earnings of the company and earnings of the company at least you should be in a position to deliver me this particular answer price earning ratio shows the relationship between the earnings and the price price basically stands for market price here reason being is very simple if i am earning so much how much price you are going to pay me suppose i say my price earning ratio is five five means five by one if price earning ratio is five indirectly it means if earnings is one then investor will pay me five that means if my company's earning is one how much price my share would command in the market so that is nothing but market price so your price earning ratio shows the relationship between price and earnings and indirectly it will help you in finding out the market price now in this question it is given that at the end of the first year Earning per share is 26. At the end of the first year, earning is equal to 26. And it is also given that price earning ratio is 5. 
in intentionally i took actually price earning ratio as 5 and price earning ratio is 5 so i just told you if price earning ratio is 5 it means if earnings are 1 then market price is 5 so if earnings it is given in the question so if your earnings is 26 then how much price uh, my my share would command in the market that mean at the end of the first year market price now i can find i can simply multiply earnings with the price earning ratio which is 5 it will be equal to 130 so now i know that market price so question hasn't given any market price at the end of the first year so market price is 130 and we know that exercise price is 70 so our fair value will become 60. Fair value means concession which we are giving to the employees. So, this is how I am going to find out fair value. As you have seen, fair value will be 60. And number of employees will be equal to, number of employees will be equal to 2000 minus 380. 2000 I have already computed. That is equal to 1620. So, number of employees at the end of the vesting period, you are visualizing at the end of the first year, you are visualizing that by the time you are going to reach the vesting period, number of employees who would complete the vesting condition would be 1620 and you will give them 50 option each. So, into 50 and concession will be 60. So, ultimately, uh, this will be your total, whatever it is. I think it is 48,60,000, whatever it is. 48,60,000. So, then I am going to see how much I am going to recognize in this particular year. So, proportion will be one third. So, we call it cumulative recognition. So, cumulative amount which I am going to recognize at the end of the first year will be equal to divided by 3. That is equal to 16,20,000. So, my first answer is correct. Expenses to be recognized in the first year is 16,20,000. Less previously recognized less previously recognized how much expenses i have previously recognized zero so that mean in the current year i am going to recognize 16 lakh 20 thousand recognition in the current year you can write correct so 16 lakh 20 thousand you are going to recognize in the current year this is how you are going to do in the first year this is the main point in this particular question is it clear to you or not And then, in the second year, it is given, year 2. Now, we move to year 2. This is year 1. This is year 2. Correct? In year 2, it is given that at the end of the year 2, the company found that actual annual for feature rate is 4%. It is not given... For example, in the first case, it was clearly given that actual employees who left the organization is 100. And most of the times, actual number of employees who leave the organization is given in this particular fashion only, 100, 50, 30, 40. However, in the second year, instead of telling us exact number of employees who left the organization, they told us in an indirect manner that at the end of the second year, company found that actual number of four feature, was, four feature rate was 4%. This is nothing but actual number of employees who left the organization. So, in this case, you will have to find, in second year, you will have to find how many employees actually left the organization. So, how many employees who left the organization? I will have to find in the second year, correct? So, in the second year, how I am going to find? I know that I had 2,100 employees in the beginning and 100 employees have already left. So, 2,000 employees, correct, are there and I want to know how many more will leave in the current year. So, in the second year, what I know is that actually employees left 4%. But 4% of what? See here, first you need to understand it in this manner. Lots of workings I will need to do in this particular question. For example, when I will reach the second year end, I will have to find out actually actual number of employees who will leave the organization in the second year. Actual number of employees left. How will I find? As I told you, I had in the beginning 2100 employees. 100 have already left in the first year. So, the concrete situation is that at this moment, I have got 2000 employees. 
you need not require to take into account expected number of employees at this moment because exact situation is that out of 2100 employees have left now you are visualizing how many more employees actually would leave the organization so actual for feature rate is four percent so you will take the four percent of two thousand four percent of two thousand will be equal to eighty so that means out of 2100, 100 plus 80, total number of employees who would actually leave the organization by the end of the second year will be this much. So that means 2100 minus 1000, 2000 minus this. So total number of employees who left the organization is 180, 100 in the first and 80 in the second year. Not only this, company, now I will have to subtract expected number of employees expected number of employees these are the employees with us at this particular moment at the end of the second year now how many more will leave the organization now now only third year is remaining expected number of employees to leave means expected number of employees who i whom we think would leave the organization in the upcoming year that is the next year expected number of employees to leave now i will have to find that how will i find that Question has stated that Question has stated that In the second year company found that actual number of forfeiture rate is 4% We have used this to find out the actual number of employees who have left the organization And company re-estimated the expected annual, feature, annual forfeiture rate at 5% Now company is under an impression that 5% more will leave the organization. So there are 1920 employees right now with me and we know that out of it 5% more will leave the organization. Are you getting my point or not? So I will compute 5% of 1920, 5% of 1920. 5% of 1920 I think is 96, 1920 into 5%. That is 96. Expected number of employees to leave means employees whom we think are going to leave in the third year. So at the end of the second year, we are under an impression that these many employees are going to fulfill the conditions. Ultimately, who will reach the vesting date. Correct. So 1920 minus 96. So 1824 employee, I think actually, I think means actually we are under an impression that these employee these many employees are going to leave the organization this is how you are going to compute the uh, do the computation second important point ultimately you will have to multiply them with the what we call number of options 50 then you will multiply them with fair value again you will have to find out the fair value even at the end of the second year in order to find the fair value at the end of the second year further it is given that in the second year earning per share and price earning ratio earning per share is 27.5 and price earning ratio is 4 i just told you and so many times i have told you price earning ratio now is 4 at the end of the second year first write in this manner it means if your earnings is 1 if your earning is 1 market price is 4 and in the second year if your earning is equal to 27.5 what will be the market price is it clear to you this is how you can find so in the second year it is given 27.5 and 4 all you have to do is to multiply to get the market price so 27.5 into 4 will give you 110 so that means in the second year you have been able to find out that market price is 110 and your exercise price will remain same because we have committed to sell the options at the rate of 70 so 40 will become your fair value in the second year Similarly, now you will reach the third year and do the calculation. At the end of the third year, it is given that company found that actual number of four feature rate is 10%. Actual number of four feature rate is 10%. You can use it now. And earning per share in the final year is 18 and 5. So earnings is 18. Price earning ratio is 5. Multiply 18 with 5 to get 90 as the market price. Subtract 60 or whatever, 70, your exercise price to get the what we call value of uh, uh, fair value. This is how ultimately you are going to do the solution. I will show you the complete solution for you. 2,100 employees in the beginning, 100 employees actually left. Expected to leave 380. I 
told you how I computed 380 expected to leave in the next two years it means because we have already reached the end of the first year so in the next two years we have 2100 minus 100 employee at the end of the first year so into 10 percent 200 employees will leave in the second year and in the third year 2000 2000 minus 200 1800 into 10 percent so third total 200 plus this 380 and ultimately total number of employees will be 1620 into 50 into 60 and how we computed 60 i have also told you here in this manner first you multiply 26 by 5 that is earning per share is 20 price earning ratio is 5 130 will be your market price so your fair value will be 60 every calculation has been given now after multiplying all these three items you will get this amount 48 lakh 60 thousand divided by one multiply it with one by three to get 16 lakh 20 as the cumulative recognized amount previously recognized zero expenses to be recognized in the current year will be 16 lakh 20 thousand now we move into the second year in the second year also i told you there are 2100 employees 100 have already left in the first year and 80 will leave i told you how i computed 80 in order to compute 80 because in the second year it was given to us that actually 4% of the employee will leave. So 2100 employees were there in the beginning, 100 had left in the first year. So we are left off with 2000 employees at the end of the second year, correct? Sorry, at the end of the first year and in second year actually 4% employees left. So 4% of 2000 will be 80. So total number of employees who who have left out of 2100 will be 100 plus 80 that is 180 and then i subtracted 96 as i told you because i am expecting that at the rate of five percent some more employees will leave the organization at the end of the year two remaining employees are 2100 minus 100 who left in the first year 80 who left in the second year total 1920 so you will compute five percent of this you are expecting that five percent of these many employees would leave the organization which is 96 so after subtracting 96 you will get a figure of 1824 employees multiply it with 50 and now you get what we call 40 as the fair value i told you how i arrived at 40 110 minus 70 and here i have done the calculations for you 27 into 4 is 110 subtract 70 from it to get 40 so total expenditure in the second year sorry total expenditure now 36 lakh 48 thousand this total expenditure means total expenditure in your opinion for three years will amount to 36 lakh 48 thousand so into two by three so by the end of the second year this much of expenditure should have been recognized out of which 16 lakh 20 thousand have already been recognized so in the second year i will recognize 8 lakh 12 thousand and finally when i will reach the final year 2100 employees were there 100 have already left 80 have already left correct so to, from 2100 i will subtract 180 so total number of employees are 1920 given to us is that in the third year actual number of employees who left the organization is 10 percent so 10 percent of what 10 percent of total number of actual employees and total number of actual employees means employees who were there in the beginning and who have actually left prior to year three prior to 300 employees and 80 employees have left so 1920 in the beginning of the third year out of that 10 percent you are expecting so 192 employees will leave in the uh, you can simply subtract 192 from 1920 also or instead you can subtract it in this manner out of 2100 total what we call employees who have left is equal to this much 372 and because we are at the end of the third year after that there is no vesting date so we have already reached the vesting period end date so no question of computing what we call expected number of employees who would leave the organization so ultimately these many employees will fulfill the condition and reach the end of the third year that means these many employees will become entitled to the options so at the rate of sorry 50 options per employee will deliver and now your fair value is 20 how because 18 is earning per share and price earning per share is 5 18 is earning and price earning ratio is 5 5 into 18 will tell you the market price you will subtract 70 from market price to get 20 as the fair value then finally rupees 17 lakh 28 thousand will be the total expenditure see this total expenditure what does it suggest it suggests that 
ultimately total expenses of three years should have been 17 lakh 28000 that mean all in all by the end of the third year only 17 lakh 28000 should have been recognized but problem is that you have already recognized higher amount 24 lakh 32000 that is this much if you total them it will be equal to 24 lakh 32000 total expenditure should have been recognized this much only but total expenditure already recognized is 24 lakh 32000 so the difference of these two will tell you that in the third year you will have to do the derecognization -de so we have computed the first three answers of this particular questions and which are matching correct 16 lakh 20 8 lakh 20 and 7 lakh 4 expenses to be derecognized question has also asked one more thing value of options forfeited also known as options lapsed for example, in this particular case, what is happening? In this particular case, when vesting period ended, we know that 1728 employees only are there. Correct? That means at the end of the vesting period, 1728 employees were entitled to the option. But problem is that in the question it is given that only 1,700 employees exercised the option. That means out of 1,728, 28 employees did not exercise the option. Now you think in this manner, if these 28 employees would have been given 50 options at the rate of fair value, because fair value at the end of the third year is 20. So your expenses would have been 28,000. So this is, this 28,000 will be considered as value of options lapsed or value of options forfeited is it clear to you so now we have delivered answers to all the questions which have been put up before us now there is another question under this particular section i will do it also and it's a pretty strong question however if those among you who have recently watched my lectures on india ascended and three over there i had explained net payment method and I told you that even though the accounting in the books of inquiry is not needed, but you should be familiar with this. And at least you should know the calculation of the PC from all the what we call met methodologies, for example, net assets method, net payment method, and even intrinsic value method. So in this question, it will test that how deeply you have studied net assets method, correct? Actually, but anyway, I will talk about that first. First, let me solve the question. When this question came in the examination, it seems there are lots, there are some misprint. For example, it is given that given below are the extract of the balance sheet of A limited and B limited. But fact, fact is that only B limited's particulars are given. Nowhere A's particulars are given. Given below are the extracts of the balance sheet. This is given in your suggested questions. Correct suggested answer question or whatever you may call it. Only anyway we are we are we do not require in this case a limited balance sheet but still such line should not have been written over there they could have simply written in this manner that extracts of the balance sheet of b limited is given in the extract of the balance sheet we find that there are 80000 shares of 10 each so obviously their total amount will be equal to 8 lakh besides that we have reserves and surplus to the extent of this much and of course, non-current liability, non-current asset and current assets are given to us. Here in this particular question, we are supposed to compute only the consideration. The consideration was agreed to be paid as follows. If you remember one thing, under net payment method, I had told you recently, in fact, in fact, two, three sessions ago, I told you under net payment method, Actually, we will see later on that A is the purchasing company and B is the vendor company. A is the acquirer company and B is acquired company which is acquired, basically known as vendor company. As per AS14, I am talking about. Correct? Under net payment method, the purchasing company uh, will deliver payment to the various parties, to the various parties of vendor company. So in this case, we will see later on, correct, that only equity shareholders of B, of B Limited, which is the vendor company, are receiving some payments from purchasing company. And they are receiving payments from the purchasing company in the form of cash, some payment they are receiving in the form of cash, some payments they are receiving in the form of equity share, we will see later on, and some payments they are receiving in the form of what we got preference shares in this particular question 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट इज रिटर्न डेट ए पेमेंट इन कैश ऑफ रुपीज फाइव पर शेयर इन बी लिमिटेड ए पेमेंट इन कैश ऑफ रुपीज फाइव पर शेयर ए पेमेंट ऑफ रुपीज ए पेमेंट इन कैश वट है प्रॉब्लम ए पेमेंट इन कैश ऑफ रुपीज फाइव पर शेयर इन बी लिमिटेड नाउ यू टेल मी हाउ मेनी शेयर आर देयर इन बी लिमिटेड In B Limited, this is the balance sheet of B Limited. How many shares are there in B Limited, sir? Eighty thousand shares. Well, if there are eighty thousand share, question is clearly mentioned that company A will give cash of five per share. That means every shareholder will receive a cash of rupees five. I think that will be equal to four lakh. This payment will be received by the equity shareholders, no doubt, but they are going to receive it in cash as I just told you. Correct. Second point, A Limited will issue shares of rupees ten each. Actually, the line is the issue of shares of rupees ten each in A Limited. That means A Limited will issue its share of rupees ten each on the basis of two equity shares valued at rupees fifteen. On the basis of two equity shares valued at rupees fifteen. What does it mean? It means equity shareholders. Besides receiving the cash, will receive two equity shares, two equity share valued at rupees fifteen, and one. That means equity shareholder who are eighty thousand will receive one cumulative preference shares valued at rupees ten, valued at rupees ten. So equity shareholders, as I told you, are receiving cash, equity shares, and preference share. They have received a cash of four lakh, and they are going to receive equity share for every five shares held. It means equity shareholder of B Limited will receive two equity share. At the rate of fifteen for five share for five share that means for five if you are the shareholder of B Limited for your every five shares you will receive two shares from company A but at the rate of fifteen. If I if I am going to compute the value of this item actually you need not require to write at this moment correct eighty uh, thousand divided by five into two sorry eighty thousand. Divided by five into two into fifteen will give you four lakh eighty thousand. Four lakh eighty thousand. This much of amount you will receive by way of equity shares, correct? And this line basically for five shares held stands for not only equity share but preference share which the A Limited is delivering. For every eighty thousand equity shareholders of B Limited, purchasing company will give one share for rupees ten for every five shares. That means if you are shareholder of B Limited and you are having five shares, you will also receive one preference share of rupees ten each. So how much it will be equal to eighty thousand divided by five into one into ten? That is equal to one lakh sixty thousand. Now if I will add four lakh. Because equity shareholder in total are receiving four lakh by way of cash, four lakh eighty thousand by way of equity shares, and one lakh sixty thousand by way of preference shares. But all these payment will be received by equity shareholder. If I will total them up, it will be equal to nine sixty plus one sixty ten lakh forty thousand eight sixty plus one sixty. So total purchase consideration logically is ten lakh forty thousand. However, if the question would have been only till up to this particular stage. If the question would have been only till up to this point, then you can see computation of purchase consideration was quite easy. This is what I told you under net payment method. However, here this mouse actually creates a lot of problem. Anyway. However, later on the question tells. Later on the question tells that the whole of the share capital consists of share holding in exact multiples of five, except the following holdings. Whole of the share capital. Whole of the share capital or share holding means eighty thousand into ten, eight lakh worth of shares. Share capital we are having and eighty thousand shares we are having. 
एंटायर शेयर कैपिटल इज इन मल्टीपल्स ऑफ फाइव क्वेश्चन स्टेट डेट एंड फर्दर क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो स्टेट डेट ऑल्सो स्टेट डेट एंटायर शेयर कैपिटल इन एक्सेक्ट मल्टीपल्स ऑफ फाइव एक्सेप्ट दॉलोइंग एक्सेप्ट द फॉलोइंग मीन्स ऑल दीज फेलोज आर शेयर होल्डर्स ऑफ बी लिमिटेड ए लिमिटेड मस्ट बी होल्डिंग हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटीन शेयर B limited also must be holding seventy six share. C limited must be holding seventy two shares. D limited must be holding twenty eight shares. It is given, and other shareholders are there. It is written other individual shareholder. Further, it is given each member holding one share each. Actually, eight individuals are there, and they are having only one share each. So total number of share is eight. so if we add all this thing it comes to 300 that mean total 300 shares are there which are not in multiples of 5 which are not in multiples of 5 the problem is that even if this question would have been up to this particular stage again there would not have been any problem my purchase consideration would have been 10 lakh 40000 there would not have been any problem problem is that in this question in the last line it is written it was agreed that a limited will a limited company will pay in cash for fractional shares equivalent at an agreed value of shares in b limited but the problem is that agreed value is not given we can find it out quickly don't worry about that point you need to understand that actually my purchase consideration in total will be 10 lakh 40000 without any doubt but i will have to now show that what portion of the purchase consideration i am paying in cash for fractional share that mean i will have to find out fractional share so the main question is how to find out fractional shares main point you need to understand this so it is not a very tough task don't worry about that you need to keep in your mind that b limited is having 80000 shares now mr a who is a shareholder in b limited is having 116 share and we have been informed of already that these shares are not in multiples or not in exact multiples of 5 correct now what i will do first of all i obviously i will have to find out the fractional number of share fractional number of shares means those shares which are not in multiples of 5 so how to find that the point is that mr a is having 100 116 shares what i am doing say here in calculator i will write 116 shares correct 116 shares and then i am going to divide it by 5 please divide if you have the calculator divide it what figure you are getting you are getting a figure like 23.2 you are getting a figure like 23.2 isn't it or not now forget this point 2 only go for the absolute figure absolute figure is 23 now see here i have written 23 that mean 20 what mr a is having 116 share out of 116 share 23 are in multiples of 5 what does it mean if i am going to multiply 23 with 5 i think i will get 115 i will get 115 don't write in the examination but i just to make you understand 23 into 5 will make 115 that mean out of 116 shares 115 shares are in multiples of 5 and only one share is not in multiples of 5 this one share will be termed as fractional share i hope now you got the meaning of fractional share is it clear to you now you let me know how you are going to find out from mr b first of all i will Right, seventy-six. I will divide by five. Why I am dividing by five? Because multiples of five I need to find out. Now this time the figure which I am getting is fifteen, fifteen point two. Forget point two. Only take care of fifteen. Is it clear to you? Right here, fifteen. So it means fifteen are in multiples of five. so if you multiply 15 by 5 you will get 75 that mean out of 76 shares i may say that 75 shares are in multiples of 5 so 75 you separate from 76 again one share out of 76 only one share is there which is not in multiples of 5 i may say so is it clear to you or not 
So out of 76, 75 shares are in multiples of you know, 5, but only one share is not in multiple of 5. So this one share will be considered as fractional share. And similarly, now have a look over 72 divided by 5. You will get 14 point something. Write 14 first. So you have written 14 now. Correct? This 14, which you have written, now multiply this 14 by 5 you will get 70. So out of 72, 70 shares are in multiples of 5. That means 2 shares are not in multiples of 5. Similarly, 28 divided by 5, you will get 5 point something, right? 5. So you have written 5. And then in multiples of 5, so 25. That means out of 28, 25 shares are in multiples of 5. So only 3 shares are not in multiples of 5. No, will be known as fractional share. And as I told you, others are individuals. There are eight individuals and they are having only one shares. See, multiples of five we are computing. If I am having one share only, it can, that means none of the individual is having any shares in multiples of five because they are having only one shares. Unless and until they are having more than five shares, they cannot have multiples of five. So point is that there are eight shareholders but they are having only one, one, one shares. So that is why all these shares will be considered as fractional share, not in multiples of five. So now if I will add all this, I will get 15. It means now I have been able to find out how many shares out of 80,000 are not in multiples of five. That means 15 shares will be considered as fractional shares. So out of a total share 80,000, fractional share 15, total 79,885. Correct? Now, when I will make the payment to the equity shareholder, instead of taking 80,000, I will assume that there are only 79,985 shares because they are in multiples of 5. Correct? So, company will make the payment. The company will make the payment in the similar manner as I just told you. Only thing is that instead of 80,000, now, now you will write 79,985. For every 5 shares, company is giving 2 equity share at the rate of 15. So, total payment to the equity shareholders in equity shares is 4,79,910. I have written in equity share. Similarly, 79,985 share. Holders, equity shareholder will receive one preference share of rupees 10 each for every five share. So this much of amount they will receive in what we call preference share, 10% preference share. And then 79,985 share, every share will get rupee 5 in cash. 3,99,925 they will also receive in cash. Now I will write fractional share 15. How much I will have to pay to the fractional share? I have written here 13, but nowhere in the question it is written 13. So how I have been able to find out this value? Actually, you need not require to find out this value. Because I did the computation earlier. If no share would have been fractional share, then purchase consideration would be 10,40,000, which I computed earlier. So first you will have to compute the total purchase consideration taking the full value of the share. So you know that for 80,000 shares, logically the company must make a payment of 10,40,000 as per the agreed terms. Now, now you take 195 as the balancing figure. It will be now balancing figure. That means this much of amount which you will pay to the 15 fractional share, it will be considered as balancing figure. Now if you divide 195 by 15, obviously you are going to get 13 as the value. Is it clear to you or not? This is how I have determined 13. Actually, there is no need to determine it. You can simply write away 195. But you need to understand this. Correct? First, without considering the fractional share, I computed the purchase consideration in this manner, which is very simple. 80,000 share, 5 in cash, 4 lakh. Then 80,000 for every 5, 2 equity share at the rate of 15, total 4 lakh 80. Then 80,000 share for every 5 share, 1 preference share of 10 each, 1 lakh 60. Total is 10 lakh 40,000. This is how we computed this. So, this is the point. So, this is how you are going to get, uh, this, this is how you are going to do this particular question. So, in this particular session, I will take these two, uh, uh, what we call questions, simply because of the fact that I am recording this session at 6. And nowadays, time has become very cost-training factor, to be very honest with you. So, that is why I cannot take 
in one go all the questions. You must understand my predicament also and my other commitment also. I have to write books for various publications also, number one. Number two, there are some auditing works pending. We have to take care of those. Number three, I have got four flagship courses, financial reporting, both Hindi version, English version, CFR Hindi version, English version. And each segment need to be kept satisfied with recordings. So you can understand that out of 12 hours or 24 hours, how much time I can squeeze out. Correct. So that is the reason actually we are finishing, uh, finishing today at this particular point of time. Of course, with the promise to meet you next in the next, uh, next uh, most probably tomorrow. Correct. At same time. Till then, it's goodbye.